today I'm joined, depending on where he is in um, the grids here, uh, I'm joined with my amazing coworker, Alex Orr. He is a sales engineer here, and he is our moderation guru. Like anything related with moderation, uh, I can ask him and he will know the answer to a T. So um, first thing, uh, Alex, my question to you to start off the, the, the morning is, what are you drinking? Oh, man. I, it is evening time here, so I'm drinking some water so I can stay hydrated. Nice. And let's and see. I had a poll pop up. I assume that popped up for everybody. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we got a poll on the side. If you guys, you know, like uh, feel inclined, some, most of them are kind of fun, but uh, some of them also asking um, general moderation questions. Um, so feel free to answer those at any point. And probably at the end, we'll circle back to them and see what uh, everyone has clicked. Um, okay. Uh, since it's morning for most everyone else, what is, what is everyone else drinking? Angeline, what are you drinking? I'm drinking water. I actually had my water. coffee already. I had two coffees and now I'm drinking just drinking water. Two coffees. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> uh jane are you drinking anything yeah i'm having my coffee ah good black coffee mixed blended it's latte oh latte good choice yeah. uh kaizong what are you drinking yeah i had my coffee in the morning uh haven't had a lot of sleep last night so i actually did, did not sleep last night at all so just doing coding uh, all nighter yeah so uh lots of coffee to keep me awake today okay i just nice. had my share in the morning Cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, Alex, do you want to give us the lowdown on moderation features? Definitely. Uh, nice to meet you all. As Jason said, I'm Alex. I'm a solutions engineer uh, with Sendbird. And if you uh, are using Sendbird or end up using Sendbird and have any moderation questions, we're very likely to end up talking and help you um, solve a lot of the moderation problems that pop up um, with different types of chat. Um, so what we're going to do today, I'm going to walk through a few of the different types of moderation we offer. Um, we're going to do that in a slide deck. Um, the slides are a little bit boring, um, so we'll cruise through that really quick, and then we will uh, see a demo of some of those in action, and then we'll have a Q&A here at the end. If you guys have any questions, feel free to interrupt me, um, and we'll just get started. Um, so different types of moderation we're going to cover today. Um, we have our text moderation. Um, we'll go into more detail on what each of these are in su subsequent slides. Um, dashboard moderation, image moderation, channel moderation, and then different user actions like banning, blocking, muting, um, stuff like that. So let's dive in and we'll start with text moderation. So there's a lot here. Um, we can go into presentation mode, actually. There's a lot here. But really there's two things to focus on. There's two types of text moderation. We have profanity filtering um, and how this works is it's gonna be, uh, you can either do for both profanity and domain filtering, you can do a block or an allow list. So you can either uh, block certain words um, or in the case of domains, you can say, I only want domains from uh, sendbird.com or whatever your homepage is. Um, how profanity filtering works is we give you out of the box a default dictionary of different words that can be blocked. Um, either you can block the message, you can replace it in place with stars, um, and this all happens on the sender backend. So when the message is delivered to your users, in the case that it's not blocked, it'll have uh, the profanity filtered out. Um, and it works the same um, with domain filtering. You can allow um, or reject uh, different domains. Um, and then finally with profanity filtering as well, you can, if you don't wanna use specific words, but rather identify a pattern, um, you can identify different patterns using uh, regex instead. So we'll see some examples of that um, here in the demo. Uh, we also have our dashboard moderation. Uh, this is what it looks like, but what it allows you to do as the application owner is you log in, you can be a fly on the wall, you can see what's happening in the chat, you can send admin messages, you can perform dip some of the different uh, moderation actions that we'll see, um, like kicking users out of the channel, freezing the channel, a um, few things like that. Um, image moderation, this one's really cool. And how this works 
is we use uh, Google's Cloud Vision API. Um, and if you're sending a file message um, to a channel, what we can, what they'll do is the Google will return a score uh, on a scale of zero to five, how likely it is to meet different categories. Um, and there's a few, uh, so like a violent category or medical or racy category. Um, and then you can set different thresholds um, based on those categories um, and say, hey, anything that's very likely to be uh, a medical photo because that really grosses me out, um, we definitely want to block those and don't want to allow those in chat. Um, or if you want to be a little more lax on it and only block the, the absolute certain stuff, that's an option as well. Um, and then one key thing here I like to highlight is almost all of this moderation can be done not only globally across your entire application, but you can really um, kind of get fine grained and fine tuned um, and set different rules uh, on a channel level. Or we have something called custom types, which is like a grouping of channels, um, usually by topic or theme. Um, and we'll see that in the demo as well. Um, then additionally, um, not only does this apply to actual file messages you send, but you can optionally set this to apply to URLs as well. And then, okay, different types of channel moderation. These are cool. Um, and these are also global settings or um, if you want to narrow it down by theme uh, or custom type, uh, you can do that as well. You can decide how long do you want to keep the messages around? Some types of conversations are more short-lived some are long lived or like think of texting. That's, that's a conversation where most of us want all those to stick around forever. Uh, some of us may not, uh, but yeah, you, you can, that's totally configurable. You're in control of that. Um, you can control the chat history. So when a new user joins, should they be able to see the conversation that happened prior or only everything going forward? Uh, do you want clickable links? How long should messages be? How many messages can get sent to the channel? A um, bunch of different options. Um, and then we also have the concept of operators. And so this can either happen, um, we saw that screenshot of the dashboard earlier, um, and that's an admin on your Sendbird dashboard. But then within channels of chat, there's also users called operators. And these are privileged users uh, that can make, perform different actions that are also um, admin type actions. They can ban users from the channel either permanently or for a certain period of time. They can mute users in the channel so they can still say, stay in the channel, see the conversation, um, but they can't participate. Um, they can freeze the channel. Um, so a lot of things to control different user behaviors. Um, and what we found is there's so many use cases for chat. Um, and I'm sure if you guys have seen Subra's website, uh, we have customers in all sorts of different uh, use cases. There's delivery, there are communities and message boards. Um, and all of these, um, another actually really popular one um, is uh, like marketplaces. Like um, in the US, we have Craigslist. Uh, they're not one of our customers, but just like the, the type of uh, app to think about. Um, so anyway, the wide variety of different types of applications. And what we found working with um, all these different apps is the type of behaviors that users do that need moderation really vary a lot depending on what the use case of your chat app is. Um, so what we found to be the best is as you're building your application, we've seen it all. Um, and maybe you have too, um, maybe you know what your users are doing. Um, but if you collaborate with us, we can really, our moderation is really flexible and we can help uh, kind of solve problems uh, in, in whatever way they pop up for you. Um, so blocking, we just discussed, um, we, we just discussed banning. Blocking is more of a user to user action. So um, let's say um, I say something mean, you don't wanna to talk, to talk to me anymore. You can block me and if we're in like a one-on-one -on -one DM chat, um, I can just shout into the ether forever. I'm going to think I'm sending messages and you never have to see what I'm saying. Um, versus in group chat, um, think of like a group uh, text message. Um, 
that's allowed through um, so that the other members of the channel get the message. And then you can control client say, okay, do you want your users to be able to view this or don't? Uh, don't you want them to be able to view messages sent by people that they've blocked? Um, freezing channels, that kind of turns it into read-only mode. Muting users, as I mentioned, muted users can't um, chat, but they remain in the channel. And this one's cool as well, smart throttling. How this is gonna work is, let's say you're in a really busy channel, like uh, live stream gaming is, is a case where we see this a lot. Um, and people are sending messages at a rate you can't even keep up, you can't read all the messages. Um, what we can configure is uh, different rates that you see those messages come through. And we might uh, filter, we, we save all the messages, but we'll, to client devices, we'll only deliver a subset of messages so that the chat becomes a lot more manageable um, in those cases. And you can kind of see what's going, what's going on and follow the chat. And then additionally, spam flood protection, um, you can uh, rate limit uh, the chat so that not too many messages are sent in a row. Um, and that's an, a behavior we often see with spammers as well. Um, okay, the profanity moderation um, that we saw uh, where it's domain filtering or profanity filtering, that can trigger different actions. Um, so you can say, hey, if somebody does this too many times, they do it three times in five seconds, let's kick them out of the channel or let's ban them or mute them. And that's all automated again on SendBird's backend. And then finally, a few other things. Um, and one of these I see as a duplicate it, and has a typo is the smart throttling. Um, but the rest of this is now. Um, you can uh, kind of in coordination with SendBird, you can uh, talk to us and we can restrict certain ac actions from uh, your client application so that it can only be performed from your back end for security reasons. Um, there could be item limits where maybe users, you only want to be able to join a certain number of channels, send a certain number of invites. That's another common spam behavior we see is invite spam where, hey, you can't message a user, but maybe you want to just send invites um, to a lot of people. And so that's another thing you can restrict if that's the type of spam that you see. Um, duplicate word detection. Uh, this is another common pattern we see. And then account age-based channel creation limits. Um, and so where this is really common is communities and forums where new accounts, you don't want people to just be able to go create new accounts and create a ton of channels. So when they're a little bit newer, um, the, you can, this is totally customizable but you can make that limit really tight. And then maybe if the account's a month old or two months old, whatever threshold um, think is best, uh, maybe they can create uh, unlimited channels or, or a lot, lot more channels. Um, so those are a few different types of moderation. I know that's a lot of content to fit into about 15 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> we have about 15 minutes left um, and we'll save time for questions at the end. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna demo a couple of these features for you guys. And I have a chat set up here and I'm logged in as four users. And this situation's a little bit silly, um, but hopefully just play along with me. Hopefully this is kind of fun. But I have two groups. I have some vampire hunters. So I'm logged in as a user named Van Helsing and a user named Buffy. And then we have our vampires. We have Dracula and Lilith are our two vampires. Um, and they're both having conversations. I just added some kind of seed messages here um, where they were talking to each other and ignore the layout here. I just zoomed in so you guys could see a little bit more easily. Um, but we're gonna see some different um, uh, moderation actions um, in these channels. So I'll leave these windows open, but let's head over to our Sunbird dashboard first. Um, and you'll see one of the, the types of moderation we talked about should look familiar. And that says group channel moderation. So all these channels uh, that I created are group channels. We also have something called open channels. The distinction is not really important right now. Um, that's just kind of how we categorize different channels for different use cases. Um, but what you can do as an, as an admin is you can come in, you can see um, the chat history, we also have these automatic event messages. So if something's edited on the channel, 
I can see this in my dashboard and then you can choose, hey, do I wanna display these type of messages to my users or not? In the demo, I'm not displaying this, but you could choose to do that if you'd like. Uh, so what I could do as an admin here, so I could send a message to the channel. And I wanna tell my vampires to be nice, to not hunt any humans. And then if I go to one of my vampire channels, um, I see this admin message. We render it a little bit differently because it's not coming from the user. Uh, but again, the nice thing about Sunbird is this is totally customizable. Um, there's other things you can do, um, like as an admin, even though um, I didn't send it, I could delete this message from Dracula. Um, I'm not going to, uh, but that's something that you could do. Um, you can copy a link to the message. And then there's a lot of channel moderation features you can do as well. So if I freeze the channel and then I go back in and I try to chat, I can't chat because the channel's frozen. Uh, so Sunbird works with real-time events. So when I click freeze, not only did the channel freeze so the messages aren't allowed into the back end, but then our server told the application, hey, this channel's frozen. Uh, and so the UI also uh, doesn't even allow me to input anything. But let's go unfreeze the channel. So most of these actions are reversible. Um, I could do things like um, I, can, I could kick a user out. I can mute them. I could deactivate the user entirely, allowing, not allowing them to connect uh, to Sendbird in the future, to, to the application in the future. Um, so let's mute Dracula and see what happens. And oops, I need to log in again. Sorry. And I can't send my message because I've been muted. Um, but if I am the other vampire, if I'm Lilith, I can still type. And then as the muted user, I can still receive messages. Um, so that's one action, again, totally reversible. So let's go ahead and reverse that because we want to talk with Dracula. And I set up a scenario. So we're going to go look at some of the settings you can configure in your dashboard, and then we'll come back uh, to this menu. Uh, but one of the settings you can configure is to view the chat history of a channel. Uh, like we talked about, if a user comes and joins later, um, should they be able to view the history or not? Um, so I know this sounds silly, but let's pretend the vampires are uh, mind controlling the vampire hunters, but they're not very good at it. So instead of uh, being able to log in as the vampire hunters and see all their secrets, um, it looks like... Uh, so it looks like Van Helsing fan found the vampire hideout. So instead of being able to log in and see all their secrets, their mind control is not very good. All they can do is manipulate the vampire hunters into inviting them to the channel, which is silly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite the, and I'm going to do this as an admin. You know what? Actually, I will do it from chat itself. So I am logged in as a vampire hunter and my mind is being controlled and I decide, oh, I should invite Dracula uh, to our vamp secret vampire hunter channel. Well, when Dracula goes to the channel, which tab was Dracula? I think it was this one. Maybe I should refresh to make sure. Okay, so you don't see that channel still. You might be wondering why. Well, we have a setting where if a channel is empty, this is configurable, but I have my application configured. If a channel is empty, it's not shown uh, to the users. So, but that, that confirms our, our setting is working. We're not showing the chat history. Um, now, if I'm a vampire hunter, okay, I'm gonna see here. Now, Dracula should see this channel. 
but he doesn't see all the old secrets that they found the where the vampires live, that they have a secret plan. Um, all they see is this new message. Um, again, that, that's totally configurable. You can toggle it. If I can click around my Zoom. So we'll go back to our settings. It's one of our channel settings. That's something you can toggle and configure. You also, let's set up a profanity filter now. This one will be cool. So that was a global setting we just saw. I'm gonna switch over my window. So you can also set all these through the API. Actually, there's more stuff you can set through the API rep, other than just what's available in the dashboard. Um, so we can see a few that we've talked about. Domain filter, profanity filter, um, this display pass message, that's that chat history we were just looking at. But you also can see, hey, you can do settings just for these custom types, which are groups of channels. You go back to our channels. We have custom type of hunters on our channel. Um, so let's go here and we'll create a profanity filter for hunters. And we'll replace with asterisks. They don't like vampires so much. They don't even want to see messages about vampires. Um, and we're going to put that on a block list. You also can import a default list that's, that's more realistic of words that you may want to block. You can also define regex patterns. Um, so only for um, this hunters group, we're going to block the word. Uh, did I do vampire or vampires? Let's see, plural, plural vampires. Okay, so if I am here, I see, I send a message, it gets replaced with asterisks. But remember, this only applied at the custom type level. So if I go to my vampire channel, this doesn't have any rules um, related to this. Um, So they can send this message just fine. And then just for good measure, um, this is a good view because this user, Dracula, is a member of both channels. He can see, he received the message that they don't like vampires, but he also sees we love vampires. And so that's the configurability uh, that's available with Sendbird um, is you can break things down by category and group. Um, let's do one more, and then it looks like we're running short on time, and we can jump over into questions. And what we'll do is we're going to, let's get our hunters rule that we just created. And I'm going to just copy our rules as is. But then I'm going to make an API request to, um, to make a little bit of a change. And in the domain filter, because this is a rule for hunters, they love garlic. They want to keep the vampires away. Um, but that's really the only, they're not really comfortable with technology. So they, that is the only website they're cool with their users visiting. Everything else they want to block, lock down. And let's see if I remember this correctly without looking at the documentation. We have two different types. One is an allow list, one is a block list. I think type one is our block because we blocked the word vampires earlier. Um, and then there is a setting also for, uh, for the replace with stars. So let's see what happens. We're either gonna allow garlic through or we're gonna reject it. And then we can toggle it um, and do it the other, other way. So let's update this real quick. Now, if I go to my hunters channel, so garlic isn't allowed. So we just blocked garlic, which is good. And I think this should be replace. That's allowed. So for domain filter, one corresponds. So that's an allow list. Let's send something else. So let's send sendbird.com. So garlic.com's on our allow list. Sendbird shouldn't be allowed through. It's not. But if we wanted, 
sender.com. Let's allow that through also. And then I should have said this at the beginning, but obviously any of these with the red, the red error message underneath them are not sending. Um, and I should have been more clear on that. So we can go ahead and delete the ones that didn't send. The other users didn't get those. Um, so if we go here, the other users didn't get the ones that failed. They only got the ones that went through. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically, that's block list, allow list, um, domain filtering, text moderation. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, we're not gonna do this right now. So we're out of time. But one thing you could do is, hey, if too many of those messages get rejected in a row, kick the user out of the channel. Uh, that's totally configurable here as well. Uh, you can see, you know what, let's do it. it. Takes 30 seconds. We'll say if it happens three times in five seconds, these numbers correspond to actions. It's going to be mute, block, or kick. I'm actually almost certain that number two is kick. So let's update our rule. Let's do something that's not allowed in the hunter's channel. And then we'll take the questions. Let's see. I think I can type fast enough to trigger this. Um, cool. Well, we let it. We let it ride. We got greedy, and we tried to show you one more feature. Um, and it looks like I didn't configure it quite correctly there at the end. Um, but yeah, refer to Sendbird's documentation. This is a really cool feature. Our customers use it all the time. Um, do you guys have any questions um, in the about five minutes we have remaining? Oh my gosh, we're down to one minute. Look at that. Uh, That's yeah. okay. So quick question here. Um, I, I have a requirement that uh, I, I would like to analyze the message sent between users. Uh, is that possible? Yeah, and actually I can show you that quite quickly as well. So let's set up a webhook. Let's do Empire. And for some reason, I can't update it. So let's go here. Let's turn it off. Okay, my cannot update my dashboard, but we have uh, different webhook events that you can subscribe to. Uh, yep. So yep. one, for example, would be a message send event. It includes the full content of the message. Uh, cases we see that a, a lot are. Um, People either want to do analytics, analyzing the content of the message. I think that would be a great fit for you. What do you What do you think? Okay. okay. So so basically, this will just intercept the message and send it to uh, wherever you intended it to go to. Exactly. Whatever URL you set here, set here, we'll send any of these events that you want whenever they happen uh, with the relevant information, like when it okay. happened who sent the message, what the message content was, okay. stuff like that. Um, my, 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 uh, another question is that uh, I, I saw that from your website that uh, the max limit for a uh, uh, number of people in a group is 100. Um, is there any way to raise it? Yeah, we also have a feature called super group channels. Um, and it's, it's quite similar to our group channels uh, with a few limitations around typing indicators um, and how we cap our unread count um, for very large channels because that information becomes kind of irrelevant, but otherwise they work the same. Um, and on one of our uh, paid plans, I think the default for that is about 5,000 users. But if you talk to us about well. your, I, th I think so, don't quote me on that. Um, it is configurable at different like pricing plans. Um, so yeah, if that's something that you uh, you would use, definitely talk to us about it and we can let you know, know what okay. your options okay. are. It, 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 it's good to know that you guys are flexible. Yeah, definitely. Um, any additional questions? 
Well, I know we do have a couple of questions from, um, from folks uh, uh, throughout, um, but since we're out of time, I think what we'll do is um, maybe we'll answer them in maybe the email, uh, Angeline, and then, or, or post them into the, uh, the video recording that we send up here. Uh, but if you guys do have um, additional specific questions, you can respond to that email that we'll send out to everyone. Uh, if you'd like to get in contact with Alex, uh, his, <laughs> his work email that I should be okay <laughs> uh, is alex.or at sendbird.com. So if you've got um, you know, a very specific moderation question, you can send him. Uh, otherwise, in your dashboard, um, uh, Alex, if you can show us, yes, there's the contact us form. This is probably one of the best places where you could send a message to us and actually write down the specific uh, context of what you're doing. Since moderation, we have so many moderation tools and features and your particular use case will probably require some context for us to follow. This is probably gonna be the best route um, to get a very, um, very tailored and correct response to, to your specific issue. Yeah, both are great ways to get in contact with us. And like I said, we've seen so many different use cases that it, um, definitely leverage us as a resource. We're happy to share our best practices with moderation and, and make sure your users have a good chat experience. Cool, awesome. Um, okay, so uh, we're at time. Again, yeah, if you have any questions, send that, uh, use that contact us form or send us an email. Uh, we will send a follow-up email with a link to this recording. And this will also be on our YouTube channel uh, to follow up with. And uh, just to close this off with, if you have any ad additional developer-related questions, definitely go check out our developer portal. It's just sendbird.com slash developer. And it's a great place to just get started in general. Cool. All right. If there are no more questions, then thank you very much. And we'll see you guys at the next one. Bye.